Hi everyone, I'm Grace Lynn, a children's book author and illustrator of many books, including this picture book, A Big Moon Cake for a Little Star, and this novel, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. Today, what I thought I would do is share with you from my very first novel. The very first novel I wrote is this one, The Year of the Dog. Now, even though this book is called The Year of the Dog, it is not about dogs. This book is actually about my life during my very first Chinese Year of the Dog. Because hopefully you know that in Chinese culture, every year is named after a different animal. And those animals, they all have different personalities and their personalities are kind of the traits that they lend to the year. So, like I said, this book is all about me in, during my very first year of the dog, and I'll show you the characters in this book. These are the characters in the book. There's Mom, there's Dad, there's the older sister, Lissy, there's the younger sister, Kiki, and there's the main character, the middle sister, Pacey. And just in case you don't know, my Chinese name or my middle name is Pacey. So you can see that this book is pretty close to real life. So what I thought I'd do today is read you chapter two of this book. This is called How to Get Rich. Time to eat, mom called. In the dining room, there was so much food. There was a whole fried fish, crispy and brown, meat dumplings fried golden, vegetables shining with oil, steamed buns that looked like puffy clouds, shrimp in a milky sauce, and pork colored a brilliant ruby pink. The fish's eyes stared at me. I didn't like it, so I turned that plate around so it would look at Lissy instead. She turned it back towards me, and I turned it again. Finally, we had it look at Kiki. She didn't notice. Everything we eat tonight has its special meaning, Dad said. These vegetables mean wealth. How about the shrimp? I asked. That means wealth, too, Dad said. What does the pork mean? Lissy asked. Wealth, too, Dad said. Everything means wealth, Lissy said. All we care about is money. Well, don't you want to be rich? Mom asked. Yes, Lissy and I said at the same time. Kiki nodded her head. I want to be a millionaire, I said. I want to be a gazillionaire, Lissy said. Me too, Kiki said. Me too. Well, eat these, Mom told us, passing us the fried dumplings. They say that these symbolize gold coins, so if you eat them, you'll be rich. I don't know how they're going to make me rich, I said. They don't look like gold coins to me. Maybe that's what gold coins look like in the olden days, Lissy whispered to me. I'm going to eat all of them, Dad teased. Then I'll have all the money and you'll have none. Hey, that's not fair, I said, trying to grab some dumplings off his plate. Give me some. I'll sell you one for a dollar, Dad said. That's how you get rich. The phone rang again, and this time it was Grandpa to call, saying Happy New Year. I bet Grandpa ate a lot of these dumplings, Lissy said. Grandpa's rich. Maybe he charged two dollars for each dumpling, I joked. Actually, Mom said, Grandpa got rich by doing a job for free. Did I ever tell you the story about Grandpa's first patient? We all shook our heads and Mom started the story. And this is the story of how Grandpa got rich. When Grandpa graduated from medical school and was officially a doctor, he was so proud, but he had a problem. He had no patience. It seemed like whenever people were sick, they went to someone else. No one wanted to go and see Grandpa, a young doctor with no experience. Still, with the help of his parents, he opened a small clinic in the neighborhood. Sometimes his mother would come over saying she had back pains so he could cure her. Sometimes Grandpa would use the stethoscope on himself just to make sure it was working. But most of the time, Grandpa just sat there alone like the last dumpling on a plate. And here's a little picture of Grandpa sitting all alone like the last dumpling on a plate. Then, 
One night, just when the sky began to darken with shadows, there was a frantic banging on the door. A street vendor had been robbed and was badly hurt. His clothes looked like dish rags of blood, and his wife begged for help. Grandpa jumped up and worked hard to save the vendor's life. He worked deep into the night, and he only stopped when the moon hung like a freshly peeled lychee in the sky. Finally, the patient was out of danger. Grandpa left him with his wife in the clinic and told them that he would check up on them in the morning. But when Grandpa woke up the next morning and went to check up on his patient at the clinic, there was no one there. The bed was made and the room was as clean as an empty rice bowl. Had he dreamed it all? Later, Grandpa found out that his patient was very poor. He and his wife had sneaked away after Grandpa had left because they knew they could not pay him. In fact, right after the accident, the wife had brought the vendor to two other doctors before Grandpa, and the other doctors had refused to operate because they knew that he couldn't pay. Grandpa, on, their other, on the other hand, didn't even think about asking for payment and had just hurried to save his life. So it looked like Grandpa's first patient was going to be free of charge. Grandpa worried because he thought that that didn't look like a very good start for his business. He had his family to support and they were counting on him to make money as a doctor. Was this first patient a sign of his future? But he shouldn't have worried. Like the smell of roast pork, the news of Grandpa's good work spread around the village. People were warmed by the fact that Grandpa cared more for their lives than their money. They stopped seeing their other doctors, and they came to him instead. Soon, he had more patience than he could handle. And that is how Grandpa became rich, Mom finished. Then she looked at the empty table. Ayo, she said, there's no food left for me. And that's the end of chapter two in the year of the dog. So I hope you get a chance to read the rest. And in my next video, I'm going to show how to draw a dog just like in this book. So I hope you like that book. Um, I just wanted to let you know about one thing. I have a new podcast out called Kids Ask Authors, where I and another author answer one kid question, and each episode ends with a kid book review, a kid poem, a kid joke, and I really hope that you submit your book reviews, your jokes, and your poems to it. It's really easy to do. Just go to kidsaskauthors.com, and I'll show you everything you can do, and you can listen to the podcast, too. Thanks so much. Bye.